Hello friends and welcome to episode 3 of Vault Repairs and today we're going to work on something rather obscure. Now I told you that the other week I was in that law office that was just about to close down and I came there originally to get my hands on some old shelves. But when I was there I saw that they wanted to get rid of more stuff and I took some computers and printers with me and among other things a cardboard box, the contents of which I didn't even check at the time. So I'd say let's take a first look at it and see what's inside. So we start with an ordinary old fashioned light bulb and a wall socket with a dimmer, not very interesting. But this is interesting, this is a Grundig DT3200, a dictation machine. And I think that must be from the late 90s or early 2000s. The door seems to be stuck though, I'm sure that some percussive maintenance can solve that one though. And this is a DT3201. I'm sure a very similar model to the one we saw before. The door seems to open just fine this time. What we have here, this is Grundig GDM 756F, a handheld dictation microphone. And boy, you can still buy these and they are quite expensive as I found out. Or just an ordinary power cord. And what we have here, another Grundig dictation machine. It's a Stenorette or Stenorette 2600. And I think this one must be from the late 80s or early 90s and well again we can open the door just easily but when we turn it around we can see that the what I think is the power switch seems to be broken so that is the first thing that will be fixed then in this video and here we have the power supply for the 2600 and a number of foot pedals or switches and just some random bits from the shelves that I took with me and so on so let's start cleaning these things try to get them running and repair what needs to be repaired so let's start repairing the 2600 and as it is so often the case, removing a couple of screws from the bottom side of the enclosure does the trick. We lift off the top part only to reveal one of the main PCBs and what we see here is a combination of through hole and early surface mount technology. And lying in the bottom part of the enclosure we find the parts of the broken power switch. And after a couple of more screws holding down the PCB have been unscrewed, I was able to lift off this board and well look for some date codes. And what I found are several date codes from 1988, but also one I think from 92, so that might be the year of manufacture. And here we can see the remains of the broken power switch that are still soldered to the PCB. So at first I wasn't sure if I would be able to repair the switch itself and that is why I first tried to desolder this base of the switch here. And I'm not doing such a great job desoldering here and that's partially also because I'm just using my second tier toolbox here in the vault, very old soldering iron and a not so great desoldering pump. And when it comes to these manual desoldering pumps, I really don't know what to say. The smaller ones with the aluminum tubes are longer lasting and they have replaceable tips. But the larger ones that are entirely made of plastic are much stronger and more effective, but they also fall apart after a couple of weeks and are part of the throwaway mentality that I actually don't like very much. However, I am now able to repair the little switch by placing the wiper contacts onto the base of the switch, then put the enclosure back together and tighten it by bending the little metal pins of the enclosure back in place, holding this board to the enclosure. And now I can use a multimeter to test if it's working again. So in the next step the switch is simply soldered back onto the PCB and the entire enclosure is put back together again. Now it would be time of course to test the Stenorette 2600 but for that I actually need a cassette tape that fits inside and that would be the Grundig Steno Cassette 30, a very obscure medium. So where would you even get that if it didn't already come with the dictaphone itself? Well, as luck would have it, just a couple of weeks ago I bought this old radio here on a flea market. And while I looked inside for the first time, I found something weird inside. Lost. 
81. Certain leads have left us to believe that the remains of the original Amber Room might have been stored in or around the city of Cologne in West Germany for at least some time during the Second World War. As part of a group of tourists, I will leave for Cologne by the end of this week. So the playback function and the basic adjustments seem to work. Now let's plug in one of the foot switches, which I think should allow us to give the play command by foot and also jump a little bit back and then play. That also seems to work just fine, so let's test the DT-3200 and 3201. Project Lost Memory, memo number 299, 24th of July 1981. I've sent some of the retrieved documents back to headquarters, where they will be evaluated. So at first glance, these two units seem to work just fine as well. Though you have to say that the first one plays too slow and the second one too fast with a very high-pitched voice. But I think that it's probably easy to adjust the speed just as with the Stenorette 2600. But I haven't figured out yet how that works and maybe I should just read the manual. Project Lost Memory, memo number 305, 5th of August 1981. Headquarters has just contacted me with word on the retrieved documents. I now have it on good authority that the remains of the original Amber Room have now finally been located. The site in southern Poland is however not accessible at this time. According to headquarters, the coordinates are as follows. Oh, just junk, you know, just nothing but worthless rubbish on here. Okay, I got it, I got it. Nobody fell for this. This was of course just yours truly talking into a dictaphone, making strange voices all by himself in a basement. And this was of course just my way of testing if the microphones and record functions of these dictaphones still worked and as you see, they do. So I'll give it to you that the repair in this video was rather trivial. So let's at least try to open up the enclosure of the Stenoret 2000 then, which I think is from the middle of the 1970s, and see if we can get a glance at the goodness inside. So after unscrewing just a couple of screws, I can lift off this little metal shield here, revealing the insides of the actual tape drive mechanism. And what we have here, I think, is a single capstan design with a flywheel on the back side that we can see maybe from here. Yes, you can see it here. And on the back side, we find a typical 1970s PCB with just through-hole technology and no integrated components at all. Unfortunately, I'm not able to take this apart anymore without having to desolder the wires here, I think. And, well, I just don't want to destroy this beauty, so I'll leave it at that in this video. Well, so maybe this video was a little trivial, but such is most of life, even in my life. And for those of you who are more interested in the technology in this Stenoret here, for example, you can take a look at this complete circuit diagram here of the Stenoret 2000 that I just found, so I didn't really have the time to edit that or explain that. But that's actually not what these vault repair videos are about. This is not really about in-depth analysis of anything. It's just me repairing stuff and getting things done. And this is just my way of trying to provide more regular content, even though it might be 
be a little more light-hearted at times. But don't worry, there will be enough very complicated stuff in the future. And just this week I have tried to repair several other things, like this automated disk writing machine and printer here. I also tried to get lots of old printers running again, some of which I failed to get running a couple of years ago. And then I was also working on this really large old school tape recorder from the 1950s here. And these are a couple of things that we will probably see in a repair video in a couple of days, or I will talk about it in the next lab report that I'm planning to do in just a couple of days as well. So as always, I hope you like this and see you soon.